Today, we're diving into the world of remote jobs that might not set your heart on fire, but they will definitely set your bank account on a slow and steady simmer. Now, I know what you're thinking but I want excitement. I wanna be a digital nomad sipping cocktails on a beach while coding the next big app. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but for most of us, that's about as realistic as me becoming the next CrossFit champion. But here's the thing, boring doesn't mean bad. In fact, these jobs are like the vanilla ice cream of the remote job world. They might not be the most exciting flavor, but they're reliable, they pay the bills, and they give you the freedom to work from wherever the heck you want. Plus, you can move into better jobs down the line once you've got that coveted two to three years of work experience in order to apply for it usually, which makes zero sense. But anyways, we're about to embark on a journey through five boring but realistic remote jobs that could be your ticket to the work from home lifestyle that you've been dreaming of. But quick pit stop, if you appreciate the effort we put into these videos, which we put a ton of effort into them, how about a like? It's free, easy, and makes us do a happy dance behind the scenes. For number one, let's start with a job that's about as thrilling as folding laundry on a Saturday night. You know, the kind where you're secretly jealous of the socks because they're having more fun pairing up. Data entry specialists are the ones who take all that messy unorganized information and turn it into neat little rows and columns that make accountants and analysts weep with joy. Now, why is it boring? Well, imagine typing the same thing over and over again until your fingers go numb and your brain starts to leak out of your ears. But here's what you need to know. Some of the skills required are gonna be the typing speed of a caffeinated cheetah, attention to detail of a forensic scientist, and the patience of a saint. And for all that, you make about 36 to $51,000 a year. And these types of jobs are incredibly easy to land. Now, this person knows what being a data entry specialist is. She explains that it includes inputting large volumes of data into a database and then verifying the information. And the best way to get started is you wanna practice your typing speed. So you wanna aim for at least 60 words per minute. Then you wanna familiarize yourself with data entry software like Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets. And then you wanna look into entry level positions on job boards such as Indeed or FlexJobs. Now, some of the pros of this one are you're gonna have flexible hours. There's pretty low stress overall, unless you're prone to carpal tunnel. And you can listen to podcasts or audiobooks while working. Some of the cons are it's about as exciting as watching grass grow. It can be incredibly repetitive and it might turn you into a human keyboard. Now, I know what you're thinking. Data entry, that sounds about as fun as getting a root canal. And you're not wrong, but here's the thing. This job is like the plain white t-shirt of the remote work world. It might not be flashy, but it's versatile, reliable, and it gets the job done. Plus, think about it this way. While you're mindlessly typing away, you can be plotting your next big move, learning a new skill, or daydreaming about that beach vacation that you'll be able to afford with your steady paycheck. And one thing that's really good about data entry is you can actually use it as a way to get into the data analytics or data science world. So there are really good jobs you can go into down the line. Now, one thing that's gonna stop you from being able to land these jobs is passing the interview. But don't worry, I've got your back. I've created the ultimate remote job interview cheat sheet and it's completely free. And it's gonna be packed with insider tips on acing virtual interviews from conquering common questions to mastering your video call setup. Plus it shows you exactly how to showcase your remote work skills and stand out from the crowd. And you can grab your free copy using the link in the description and the pinned comment below. Moving on to the next on the list, we have the thrilling world of quality assurance testing. It's like being a professional nitpicker, except instead of annoying your friends and family, you get paid to annoy your coworkers. Quality assurance testers are kind of like the tech world's Sherlock Holmes. They investigate every nook and cranny of software, websites, and apps, searching for bugs and glitches with the determination of a bloodhound on the scent. Now, why is it boring? Well, picture yourself clicking the same button 500 times just to see if it breaks on the 501st click. It's like watching paint dry, but with more carpal tunnel. Now, here's what you need to know. The skills required are gonna be attention to detail that borders on obsessive, the ability to follow testing protocols, and the patience to do the same thing over and over and over again. And for all of that, you get paid about forty-six dollars to $73,000 a year starting out. And one thing that's great about this one is there's lots of room for vertical growth. There's many other jobs you can go into after getting some experience as a QA tester that pay even better. Now here's the post talking about the coolest achievements of QA testers. And according to this person, they've trained 150 people in dev and have set the bar for the level of quality in their company. Here's another one who recently got a job as a QA tester. And this person changed careers at 36 years old. And while it was risky, he took the leap of faith because he wasn't happy with his old job. He took a couple of Udemy courses and YouTube tutorials, namely Java, Introduction to Manual Testing, Postman, Jira, ISTQB, and started to prepare for the interviews. And he was rejected at first with the first interview for lack of experience, but got an offer at the second company. Now, the way to get started here is to learn basic coding and scripting languages, familiarize yourself with testing methodologies and tools, and look for entry-level QA positions or internships. 
Now the pros are it's very satisfying for people who love finding and fixing problems. You can work on a variety of different projects and you get to see and test new products before they're released. The cons here are it can be very repetitive, it might ruin your enjoyment of using software or apps casually, and you have to deal with developers who insist, it's not a bug, it's a feature, bro. Now I know what you're thinking. Quality assurance, isn't that just playing video games all day? Well, sometimes yes, if you're doing video game quality insurance, but it's playing video games with the express purpose of trying to break them. It's like being paid to be the annoying kid who always finds the glitches in games, except now you're helping make the games better instead of just bragging about it on forums. Plus, think about it this way. As a QA tester, you're the last line of defense between buggy software and the general public, and you're saving the world from frustration, one error message at a time. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Now, by the way, if you want to learn more about software development and how to get into those entry level software jobs, there is going to be a free training from a company that's helped thousands and thousands of people get jobs. And I'll put that down in the description and the pinned comment below. Next on the list, welcome to the wild world of social media management, where your entire job revolves around making brands look cool on the internet. It's kind of like being a digital PR whiz, but instead of a wand, you wield hashtags and viral trends. Social media managers are the voice is behind your favorite brand's sassy tweets and the reason you can't stop scrolling through that company's TikTok. They're the ones who decide whether your feed is filled with cute puppies or product placements. Spoiler alert, it's usually both. Now, why is it boring? Well, imagine spending your entire day trying to make a vacuum cleaner sound exciting on Facebook. It's kind of like being stuck in an endless loop of how do you do, fellow kids? Now let's go ahead and break this one down. So the skills required are you have to master all social media platforms. Yes, even the ones you've never heard of in some cases. And you have to have creative writing skills that can make even a tax software sound exciting. And then you have to have the ability to turn any situation into a memeable moment. Plus you have to have crisis management skills for when things inevitably go wrong. And for all of this, you get paid about 40 to $67,000 a year starting out. Now, one of the big benefits of working as a social media manager is if you're young, you actually have a huge advantage because companies love to hire young people for these types of positions. And the reason for that is because young people grew up on social media, so it makes a lot more sense to them intuitively. But here's what it's like working in a day as a social media manager. Christine, a social media manager, starts her day with a workout, attends meetings, tracks ad performance, creates and schedules content, engages with social media posts, and wraps up by optimizing YouTube videos, all while balancing a variety of tasks and managing her team's workflow. Now, the way you can get started here is to build a killer personal brand on social media yourself. Then you can learn the art of perfect hashtags. Then you wanna develop thick skin for dealing with internet trolls. And you wanna practice explaining TikTok and other social media trends to older people. Now, some pros here, you're basically paid to be on social media all day. You're also gonna learn some super valuable skills that can transfer into many other different aspects of life. For instance, if you wanna start your own business in the future, you're likely going to have your brand on social media. But even if you don't start your own business, there's lots of different jobs in content creation. You're also always going to be up to date on the latest trends and memes. And you could potentially go viral and become internet famous, sort of. Now some cons here is you'll never be able to unplug from social media again. You might start speaking in hashtags and acronyms IRL, plus the constant pressure to be witty and relevant can be exhausting. So will you just be posting stuff the whole day? Nope, it's more like trying to herd cats on the internet. You'll be posting and crafting a brand voice, engaging with followers, putting out PR fires, and trying to make sense of analytics that look like they were designed by a drunk mathematician. But hey, if you've ever dreamed of being the person behind a brand's epic clapback or the creator of the next big viral campaign, this might just be the job for you. Just remember, with great power comes great responsibility and the occasional 3 a.m. tweet storm. Speaking of creating content, Content, have you ever thought about taking your social media skills to the next level and starting your own YouTube channel? Well, as someone who's been in the game for a while, I can tell you that YouTube offers incredible opportunities for creative expression and potential income. And I've put together a comprehensive guide on how to start and grow a YouTube channel in 2024. It's basically going to be a crash course that covers everything important from finding your niche to advanced monetization strategies. And you can check that out by clicking the link in the description and the pinned comment below. We're now venturing into the thrilling world of customer service. It's like being a therapist Therapist, except instead of dealing with people's deep-seated emotional issues, you're dealing with their deep-seated emotional issues while they yell at you, and while their toaster isn't working, and while they explain that that's your fault. That's right, remote customer service reps are the unsung heroes of the retail and digital world. They're the ones who listen to Karen complain about her expired coupon for three hours and somehow manage to not lose their minds. Now, why is it boring? Well, picture yourself saying, have you tried turning it on and off again for the hundredth time today? And it's kind of like Ground Day, but with more holding music. 
Now, here's what you need to know. The skills required are you have to have the patience of a monk, you have to have the ability to smile through the phone. Yes, people can actually hear it apparently. And you also have to have thick skin because some people are just jerks. And for all of that, you make about 35 to 50K per year. Now that probably doesn't sound like much and it also can be a pretty tough job, but the upside to this one is it's super, super easy to land a job. So here's a person online asking what the position entails. And according to this user, customer service is a very hectic industry where the main focus is efficiency and speed. Here's another one. This person's asking for the easiest companies that hire for customer service reps. And this person suggests a couple including Alorica and Concentrix. So yeah, basically what everyone already knows anyways. So the way to get started here is to first practice your customer service voice, familiarize yourself with common CRM software, and look for remote positions on job boards or company websites. And honestly, like I said before, these positions are pretty easy to land. Now the pros here are it's always in demand because people will never stop complaining. You can work for interesting companies and you can develop God tier problem solving skills. The cons are you're going to be dealing with angry customers, it can be emotionally draining, and it might make you lose faith in humanity. Plus, think about it this way. As a remote customer service rep, you're basically a secret agent. You're infiltrating these companies, learning all their secrets, and then using that knowledge to help people or, you know, to figure out what jobs are actually best to move into later on. No, but seriously, nobody knows the customers better than customer service representatives because they're talking to them all day long. So it can help you come up with really good business ideas, or it can help you just get into better positions because a lot of the time you're going to know what positions in the company have a lot better work-life balance and pay better. Now, before we go any further, I want to know your thoughts on the video. Comment down below because the next one is going to be one of my favorites, and that is a medical billing and coding specialist. And it's kind of like being a detective, except instead of solving murders, you're solving why Medicare won't cover grandma's bunion surgery. Medical billing and coding specialists are the unsung heroes of the healthcare world. They're the ones who translate doctors' chicken scratch into codes that insurance companies can understand and make sure healthcare providers actually get paid. Now, why is it boring? Well, imagine spending your day turning stub toe into S93.401A. It's kind of like playing the world's least exciting game of secret code. So let's break it down. The skills required here are attention to detail. If you haven't noticed, this is a theme. Understanding of medical terminology and the ability to decipher doctor's handwriting, which is a superpower in itself. And for all of that, you get paid about forty-three dollars to $62,000 a year, which is not bad for an entry-level job. Now, a lot of the time, this one does require some training, but usually the companies will provide the training themselves. And here's a really good post asking about a lot of questions regarding the position. And there's a response from a user who's very generous with their time. There's some really interesting questions here, including can I become medical coding and billing specialist with just a certification? And the answer to that is yes. All the person has to have is a high school degree and a cert specifically AAPC CPC for professional services. Now, some other advice that they recommend is if you don't have a medical background, try taking medical terminology and anatomy courses. And a great way to get started is to take a medical billing and coding course, as the person said. Then you want to get certified. It's usually required. And a lot of the time, the company will help you get certified. Then you look for entry-level positions or internships. Now, some of the pros of this are you are in a stable industry. People will always need healthcare. Even during recessions, healthcare jobs tend to do incredibly well. It can be somewhat interesting if you're into medical stuff, and it can lead to higher paying jobs if you want to go back to school down the line and get a higher paying medical job. Plus, it can be satisfying for people who like solving puzzles. Some of the cons are it requires ongoing education to keep up with changing codes. It can be repetitive and it might make you a hypochondriac. Now, I know what you're thinking. Medical billing and coding, isn't that just glorified data entry? Well, yes, it is glorified data entry that pays well and lets you work in your underwear. Plus, it lets you learn more about the medical field. Plus, think about it this way. As a medical billing and coding specialist, you're basically a healthcare Robin Hood. You're making sure hospitals hospitals get paid so they can keep saving lives and make sure patients don't get overcharged too much anyways. And it's like being a superhero, but with less spandex and more spreadsheets. Now, one video I did that got a ton of views, people absolutely loved it, was the highest paying remote jobs that are almost always hiring. And you can check that out by clicking right here.